Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habita filah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalallahu kareem Rabbil arshil azim in yatawallana fi dunya wal akhira We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the almighty Accepts our good and forgives our evil Protects us from kuli suwa makruh Rectifies, <coughs> rectifies our condition and affairs, strengthens us all in those attributes that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Habatifillah. One of the greatest forms of dhikr is the Quran. Reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best form of dhikr. So never forget that. Never forget that. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Allah has his own people amongst mankind They asked, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Who are they? He replied, they are the people of the Quran The people of Allah And his chosen people Ruahu Ibn Majah Ahabatifillah, no doubt we want to be chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to be the favored people of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that comes through embracing our deen, holding on to our Islam, holding on to the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And be, to be Ahlul Quran, to be Ahlul Quran, the people of the Quran, that means we have to recite the Qur'an, that means we have to read the Qur'an, that means we have to contemplate the Qur'an, that means we have to understand the Qur'an, the tafsir. And we cannot neglect the Qur'an because that is the greatest dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah mentions. Ahabatifillah in another hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam the Prophet alayhi salatu wa said the Qur'an will be brought on the day of judgment and it will say for its reciter. My Lord adorn him, so he will be made to wear a crown of nobility. Then it will say, my Lord give him more, so he will be clothed with a suit of nobility. Then it will be said, my Lord be pleased with him, so Allah will be pleased with him and it will be said to him, recite and rise up and be increased in reward with every verse. Ruahu Tirmidhi. Ahaba Tifillah also this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shows us the importance of reciting the Qur'an and being from its people. And that this is something very easy for us. Especially if you know the language of the Qur'an and you know how to properly recite the Qur'an, then you can just pick it up anytime. And if you do not, this can encourage you to learn that language, which is Arabic. And if you are still at a beginning stage where even that is difficult for the time being, of course you can read the Qur'an in the, your language, meaning just reading it alone because you're doing the best you can will bring blessings for you. You'll be rewarded and you'll be rewarded with guidance because it's a book of guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fikitabi al kareem after a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim alif lam mim thalika al-kitab la rayb fihi hudin lil-muttaqeen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after alif lam mim here is a book that contains no doubt hudin lil-muttaqeen hudin lil-muttaqeen it's a guidance for those people uh who are the pious ones? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions who are the pious ones uh, in the ayat. And we've explained it countless times. And you can go to the uh, tafsir of the mufassirin. But however, Ahabatifillah, it shows us the righteous, the pious ones, they recite the Quran, they benefit from the Quran, and it's a guidance for them. Allow the Quran to be in your life and be a source of guidance. May Allah forgive us of our taqsir and our wicked ways of removing ourselves and being far from the Qur'an. Six. Ahabatifillah, also it was narrated and reported 
on Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala that he said, if your hearts were pure, they would never have enough of reciting Allah's words. And this is in Kitab al-Zuhd li Imam Ahmed. That lets us know Allah that if we want that piety and if we want that purity of the soul, the purity of the heart, which all of us, of course, we want it, it comes through reciting the Qur'an. And that's a sign of the purity of the heart and that's a means to the purity of the heart. And that's what the mu'min should be busy with, uh, busying his, himself or herself with reciting the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify their hearts and receive the guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabihi al-kareem, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarak, liyattadabburu ayatihi, wa liyattadhakkara ulal al-bab. Allah azza wa jal says, Fi kitabihi al-mubeen, this is a blessed book which we reveal to you that they may reflect upon its verses and those with understanding may take heed. Imam Anawi rahimullah ta'ala, he stated, the reciter is enjoined to be sincere in recitation and to seek the pleasure of Allah thereby not seeking to gain anything else. He should follow the proper etiquette of the Quran and remember in his heart that he is having a private conversation with Allah and that he is reciting his book so he should recite it as though he could see him for even if he cannot see him Allah sees him what a powerful reminder by Imam an nawawi and it shows you the fadl of Ahlul Ilm that the scholars the way they deduce the way they contemplate the way they abstract rulings the way they abstract wisdom from the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is unparalleled it's unparalleled to Habat and that's why we love Ahl al-Ilm, and that's why we love the books of Ahl al-Ilm, and Fiqh was Sunnah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be united with them, I mean in paradise, I mean Ya Rabbil Alameen. So Imam al is clearly showing us and illustrating and highlighting for us the importance of reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that it should be with sincerity and that you should be contemplating and reflecting and then you'll gain truly the benefit of reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's highlighting another important fact in issue which comes from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam when the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam that the concept of ihsan the concept of Ihsan or Ihsan. He said, when the, the Prophet وسلم, was asked by Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam about Ihsan, he said, in ta'budullaha ka'annaka tara fa'in lam tukun tarahu fa'innu yirak. It is to worship Allah as if you see him. Because you can't see him, know that he sees you. Na'am. And that's what Imam, uh, Imam Anawi was making ishara to. Imam Anawi was highlighting this fact for us. Walhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and preserve our ulama that are living and forgive all the ulama that have passed. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala also uh, wrote in regards to this, you know, the Quran as a form of dhikr and remembrance. He said, there is nothing more beneficial for the heart than reading the Quran with contemplation and reflection. It is the Qur'an that inspires love and longing for Allah. It generates fear of Him and hope in Him. It makes one turn in repentance to Him and rely on Him. It causes one to fully submit to Him, leave matters in His hands, and be pleased with His decree. It inspires patience and gratitude and is a means of acquiring all of the characteristics which give life to and perfect the heart, Allahu Akbar, meaning reciting and contemplating the Quran is everything. And it gives you life in your heart. And it gives you that which to reflect on. And it gives you the wisdom. And it gives you everything good. SubhanAllah. Then Imam uh, Ibn al-Qayyim, he also mentioned, he states, 
if the people knew what recitation of the Quran with contemplation contains, they would devote themselves to it at the expense of everything else. When one reads with reflection and comes across an ayah that he is in need to, of, to cure his heart, he repeats it. He may repeat it a hundred times or even throughout the entire night. As is reported by the Prophet Wasallam and their early predecessors, Hence, reciting a single ayah of the Qur'an with contemplation and reflection is better than reciting the entire Qur'an without any contemplation or reflection. And that shows us the importance of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Qur'an and that it, in and of itself it is, the, it is dhikr and that by having a living heart and really contemplating its meaning, not just reciting, it would be better for you to learn and reflect on the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.